Welcome to the WDW News Today podcast. My name is Eric Morton. With me, as always, is Tom Corliss. Tom, this is episode 20 on a technicality. I thought the last one was 18, but we're counting the one with Jason, the magical move. The pilot. I think the pilot episode. This is episode like 18, happy so days. Was, yeah. This show is happy days. And so before you spin them off, mm-hmm. they get an episode of happy days. So now, now we the want Joni them. Loves Chachi. They're, no, yeah. they're, they're definitely Laverne and Shirley. Okay. And we, so Laverne and Shirley are off doing their thing now, but we're still here. And today we're going to jump the shark. Are we going to retcon them out of the storyline later, yeah. or are we just leaving them in? These are some old people references, by the way, we're making. <laughs> oh, Happy Days. I did find, I sent you a picture, uh, my brother's old Happy Days lunchbox. There's a story uh, that a uh, bully came after him one day, and Andy said, back off, or I'm going to hit you with my Happy Days lunchbox. Now, he wrote a song that suggested he was beat up with his own lunchbox. I, it's hard for me to tell from the dense and wear a tear net in that uh, lunchbox if that ever did happen. Hey, but. you don't, do you know what the, the bully said when he got hit with the lunchbox? Hey. hey. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. The one enduring line from We're Happy so Days dumb. is just a guy saying, That's hey. not, the, sit on it's pretty. Yeah, sit on it's a good yeah. one. Well, uh, you, were, you were just in California for a few days. Again. The opening of the... Most confusing hotel name ever because the Pixar Place Hotel replacing Paradise Pier, but it overlooks Pixar Pier, and it makes you want to call it the Pixar Pier Hotel, but it's the Pixar Place Hotel, the yeah. former Paradise Pier Hotel that yes. overlooks Pixar Pier. Yeah. Am I right? Is that... Yeah, you're not wrong. So overall impressions? It was, it was solid. Definitely better than Paradise Pier, but Paradise Pier was not good, right? I know a lot of people in the comments were like, oh, it's so plain and blah, blah, blah. I definitely don't think it's as plain, at least not the standard. No. Definitely not as plain as some of those other ones we had. Uh, I'd still take it over our room at Grandestino Tower for sure. But um, but Grandestino is a better resort. You have all these restaurants and lounges. and I ate a great Except maple. Except don't count Rick's. I ate a great maple twice. Yeah. It's unbelievable. I had chicken and waffles were outrageous. I had these fried mushroom, fried portobello mushroom spears, uh, the chilaquiles. Yeah, uh, but the, Grandest- I had like the best um, Bloody Mary I've ever had. But Grandestino, you have basically you have Toledo and like Dahlia Toledo. right there, which are both fantastic. You they have are. three bridges. You yeah. have uh, an amazing food cart court. You have Maya Grill. Yes, you have Rick's, which we. I heard is the worst you don't like Rick's, world. Um, but you which have a may lot answer of options, one of the so. questions today. I think. Yeah, that could be it. Um, well, that's great. I stayed at Pixar Pier a year, basically a year ago today. Pick par- You still got it wrong. Paradise. You didn't name either the I one stayed you stayed in or a, the new a one. A place that doesn't exist. Paradise. Well, I could have yeah. stayed at Pixar Pier like I was hiding underneath like yeah. one of the rides or something. No, um, I stayed at Pixar. Uh, I stayed at Paradise Pier a year ago, and it was plain, but they had the Luxo Ball pillows. They don't have yeah, those, those anymore. Were, they had the round ones. Those were from Pixar Fest a couple years ago, and they hung yeah. on. But then it's funny, once it became an actual Pixar hotel, they replaced them with the long. The cylindrical The, long, the cylindrical ball yeah. pillow, yeah. I think the rooms look fantastic. I would say that. I like the standard rooms a lot. Yeah. I like the I, – it's a vast improvement yeah. for sure. And I think people – like, look – um, you know, and they explained it when we when we interviewed the Imagineers last week. Um, we had like a we didn't get to film it, but they had us like sit in a round table with them. We could ask questions. And there are two types of Disney resorts, right? There are the the ones that immerse you in a story and a place, right? A faraway place, which right. is they said it's like like your Wilderness Lodge, your Animal Kingdom Lodge, Yacht and Beach, et cetera. Then there are hotels like the Art of Marvel and. Pixar place and the contemporary where you're not going to a place it's 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 an art hotel it's it's a thematic art hotel and yeah. that's that's what this is well it looks like a big improvement to me yeah it, the exterior I don't know I mean what are you gonna how there's only so many things you can do to that yeah structure, right it's not the prettiest building around yeah but what are you gonna do Disney didn't build it it was they did. There. They did what they could with it. I think they did a good job. I think you know. I just walking around all week. The guest reactions were, you you could see people liked it better. Good. Um, you know, and plus there's also a game where you throw bow buns into like boxes, 
into bow boxes. I still think great. that bow short is the weirdest. It's you know, the weirdest Pixar made, thing made for the Chinese audience specifically. Yeah. I like it though; it's cute. Um, all right, so the wigs the are wig, watching. They're like, what is the topic today? The wigs are watching live right now. Yeah. Uh, some of them, because that is one of the perks of being a wigs member. You can join the wigs at www.nt.com slash Patreon. Uh, they get to watch us film this nonsense live, and uh, they get a preview before we launch this on Tuesday. They'll have yeah. it available to them for early uh, access. Uh, so thank you, Wigs. And uh, Wigs, uh, you can ask questions in the chat. The theme of this episode, uh, this is the 20th episode, is uh, AMA, Ask Me Anything. It's like we're on Reddit, except I don't really know how Reddit works. So, Which we're following kind of the thread. Like We, we had like the personal deep dive right. last show, which, thank you. I, I think we got a lot of really yeah. positive comments. Actually, I got stopped. Um, a, a couple that, that watches us in Hawaii stopped me at the Pixar Place Hotel and told me how that was like their favorite episode. So, um, but also many of you commented and let us know that you really like that episode. Yeah, a lot of these questions aren't as personal, but they are things about opinions and things like yeah. that, which you're you're really good at sharing. So, um, <laughs> so you always know how Tom feels. So we solicited some AMA questions from uh, the YouTube community tab, and yeah. and uh, we have a number of responses, and I will try to. Um, pick some of the top ones and we'll go over them. All right. Yeah, let's do it. All right. The first one is from Chucky. Uh, Chucky like the killer doll. No, Chucky Chicken cartoons. Oh. So maybe there's a cartoon chicken named Chucky. I, that sounds great. Uh, I am a former Disneyland cast member and an animator, so I enjoy and appreciate your passion for keeping the magic alive in the parks. Tom, do you ever think you missed your calling as an Imagineer, or if you could, what would your dream Disney park slash land slash attraction be? Oh, my God. I don't think I missed my calling. I think this was my calling, right? I think I think to become an Imagineer is incredibly hard, right? I mean, you have to go to... Uh, very, to to very particular, very, <laughs> very particular schools. SCAD being one of them, and and be very specialized in one of you know the many artistic fields that you need to to be, work at WDI. Then you have to get hired there, and then prove your worth, and then get assigned. You know they don't get to pick their projects typically at WDI unless you end up drawing up something and it gets greenlit. But even then, it's not necessarily the thing you. It's not verbatim the thing you dream because you're you're essentially selling it to a client. I think this this was my calling. I think I, I served and I have served and will continue to serve a purpose for people that love Disney in this role. I, I think I've been able to create change that was meaningful and rally people behind meaningful causes as as far as defending either you know the customer experience or the artistry of of the Disney brand, right? Um, so no, like, don't get me wrong. There's a couple of cast member jobs I would want to do. I want to do the Jungle Cruise. I'd want to be Street Mosphere. Like those would be fun. Remember Street? I'll, kids, Street Mosphere. They used to have these people at Hollywood Human studios. Beings. <laughs> they used to come out and pretend they were like starlets and directors and, um, you know, all, all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, uh, but the second part of this, if, you know, hey, if you could design your uh, what. What was your dream park land slash attraction be that's to create? A, that's because a inevitably, question. if I were an Imagineer, they'd be like, okay, Eric, great. We need you to design all the handrails in the restroom stalls or you know something that yeah. wasn't as exciting. But if you got to say what kind of project you would want to be assigned to creating something. You, you know, know, we're getting ready for the studio's anniversary, and, and Tower Terror is a big topic of conversation. And before it was Tower Terror, it was going to be a Mel Brooks thing. And so I'm going to go back to something I've said before. I think Spaceballs would have made for the most fantastic parody attraction. And I, I would have loved to have been able to, number one, to work with Mel Brooks would be a dream come true, right? Yeah. Like that would be life life goal achieved. And number two, to get to do something that fun, like maybe a Spaceballs or a Blazing Saddles land. Like that's, that's my, it never, again, it could never happen, but... That's that's my dream. Uh, quick tease, because some of these questions involve Universal and Epic Universe. Yeah, uh, Annie will be joining us soon for an episode about Epic Universe. Since and we have the full announcement, some of now, these yeah. things to go over those. I think that's an appropriate question for them. But uh, thank yeah. you for the questions about Epic Universe and Universal. We'll leave them for them. Okay, boy, the two of us. Uh, What's your dream? Attraction so, or land? I don't know because it's um, kind of antithetical to my idea of Epcot, which is 
I want Epcot to remain about those countries. Um, but if we are forcing IP into Epcot more and more, then I would love to to uh, Cherry Tree Lane, the whole UK yeah. pavilion. We've talked about my um, chimney sweep show and yeah. uh, the Mary Poppins attraction. I think that's an obvious one, right? The to, horse to one, not that, the, the one they almost right, built. Right, not the one yeah. they almost built. Not, the, not Bob Chapek's. Royal Dalton Bowl teacup ride. <laughs> a Kuka arm horse attraction. Yeah. Right. I don't know. I don't know exactly what it'd be, but I, I like that aesthetic and I think it would be an easy uh, thing to pull off. Yeah. And I think it'd be wonderful. You can even fly Mary Poppins in every every night or something like that before the fireworks. Who knows? Real life Evie in, in Discord wrote, Long live Evie Starlight, one of the Street Mosphere characters. Yep, I know yep. my my personal favorite, one of my personal favorites was Mimi Kaboom. I always like Mimi Kaboom. Yeah, I had uh, on Boxed In while we were still locked, or no, on Locked In with Eric Morton yeah. way back in the day when we were all kind of remote, uh, we had Juan Scenario on the mm. show, another star of that. Bucky Greenhorn was great. There's so many great ones, so many great ones. What ride have you ridden the most at each of the theme parks you visited, and what ride at Magic Kingdom, Epcot, Isles of Adventure, et cetera, et cetera? What are your favorite rides in each of these parks? Oh, that's well, I mean, Let's, we have to go current. Splash closed, and so did Country Bears. Yeah. So, what does that leave me in Magic Kingdom? Um, well, I'll say Magic Kingdom. I always make an effort to go on Haunted Mansion and Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, that's the worst pirates. And I like Mansion. Um, yeah, sure, man. Go Mansion. Yeah. Can I, t- can I tell my quick pirate anecdote? I'll tell. Oh my God! I said, Tom, this. Our friends went on this? Pirates of the Caribbean over the weekend, and they get their pictures, and they're in the front row. And you know, you they take your picture right before you go down yeah. the drop. And the woman in the third row is is breastfeeding. Um, so it's in there. Everyone, everyone in that boat, that's their photo, right? Yeah. The, the woman breastfeeding. Yeah. Uh, not to judge people, I just thought like, if she didn't know that. Either she knew the camera was going to be there, it did it, or it's a she weird didn't, spot, which makes so it even funnier. <laughs> just like that'd be you quite know, a surprise. I have like fifteen jokes related to this. I want to say I'm going to hold them for news tonight, which is back okay. next week. Yeah, I just think you know, it's it's just funny. Uh, the it's, it's funny to imagine if that drop were a surprise, which yeah, it probably wasn't. But you know, that quite the shock. There could have been milk everywhere all over that. Oh, come on. Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> you know just have to move was, on immediately. Didn't know the drop the was coming. Yeah. All right. Anyway. Um, it's the milk they're after. It's the uh, <laughs> Epcot. I can't think of anything that I always, always ride. I think the ride I've probably been on the most at Epcot is, is living with the land. I think it has to be, for me, Spaceship Earth, just because it's one of the few things yeah. that survived. Yeah. So I've been yeah, riding that Earth for too, 35 right? years. I've been on both of those quite a bit, and um, and also Maelstrom slash Frozen. Um, Hollywood Studios, I man, I'm a vibe catcher in that park. I'm not necessarily like going and running to all the rides. I can't think of a... I've probably been on Star Tours in that part, like in my lifetime. Yeah. In the last five years, definitely Rise, because, you know, that was new and we did it a lot. (laughs) <laughs> Mine is Baseline Tap House. Yeah. That's my... I mean, I've probably eaten at Brown Derby more than I've been on every ride in that park. Yeah, I'll bet you that's true. That the Cobb Salad Cobb Attraction Cobb. is and one of bread. their favorites. Oh, the bread. <sighs> okay, and um, Animal Kingdom? Flight of Passage. Flight of Passage, right. Yeah, without doubt. Yeah. All righty. Um, what songs do you predict will be in a new Country Bears show? <sighs> I I think Teddy Barra has to sing. What is it? What else can I do from Encanto? Like where she literally swings on vines. Like I just yeah. think that writes itself, right? Yeah. Um, but maybe not. I mean, this was this show was being written before Encanto came out, so who knows? Let it go. I guess is maybe. Did they? Didn't they suggest that some songs may remain? Yeah, and so there, there, people are like, well, is it is it blood on the saddle? Is it, you know, we hope that you'll be coming back again. Yeah, slew, old slew foot. That's the one I want. I don't think that's staying. Really? I don't think so. I, I think there's just going to be nods. I think, like, 
My prediction is Big Al is going to start singing Blood on the Saddle and Henry's going to be like, we're doing a different show. You're still yeah. singing that? And Oscar Meyer's going to say, beep, beep. Oscar Meyer. <laughs> or whatever. Meyer? Mayer? What is it? I wish Nana were here to correct me. I'm wow. Sure. All right. If you had to bring back one stage show at the parks, which would it be? Examples include Hunchback of Notre Dame, uh, Pocahontas, Jungle Book, oh, Tarzan man. Rocks. I love Tarzan Rocks. I don't know if that's my choice, if I can only bring back one. But I did I did love Tarzan Rocks. That was great. Obviously, Finding Nemo the musical, and I know someone will be dumb and say, it's still there. It's it's not the same show. Um, that's gone. A stage show that Does Superstar gone. Television count as a stage show? Sure. I would love to have that back. You know, I've got mine. Yeah. You know, I I love the Castle stage shows. The last two I'm kind of like eh, on. Actually, no, Dream Along with Mickey was two ago. I like that one, all right. Um, but when I, uh, around the 100 Years of Magic, they had one, which I think is the best one they've done. It was Cinderella's Surprise Celebration. And there's a bunch of giant presents get rolled onto the stage. And Donald, the whole time, is like trying. I think we have this here on the channel. You can watch it. Um, Donald keeps wanting to open the villains, clearly left a present. And Donald, the whole time, is like, let's open this one. Everyone's like, no. <laughs> no. And then finally, he's just like, I want to open it. He opens it, and the villains come out. And there's like a really funny and compelling battle with the villains where Jafar's hat gets split in half. Captain Hook falls through a trap door, and then Shan Yu from Mulan gets blown up with fireworks in a box. Hilarious. It's really good. It's a great, the music's original music. It's really great. The props are fantastic. The, the pigeon, the, or not pigeon, doves got let out in the middle of the show, and balloons, big balloon characters blew up, and character costumes had interactive like features, and it's a really fun show. Go go watch I'll it. I'll just say this it. because we've kind of said our final farewells to that Voyage of Little Mermaid show uh, <laughs> until it returns in whatever form. Yeah. I just hope they keep the late 80s, early 90s lasers. There's no way the lasers. The lasers, I love. I know, I do The too, lasers making the waves in the fall. There's and, no way they're still oh, they gotta be say. there. They won't let us have that. Uh, best childhood memories of the parks. At that's I mean that that could be a million things. Yeah, that mine mine have to be di go back to Disneyland and just. Yeah. I think my brother reaching for the doom buggy to pull it down right when the guy then says, "Do not pull down on the safety bar," yeah. and my brother freaking out. That's one of my favorites. I mean, I guess in general, I miss Disney World being vacation, right? Yeah. Um, you know, I get to relive that a little bit when my parents come visit, um, but they're probably going to move here relatively soon. So, you know, I don't know. You, you can relive it a little bit, but um, yeah, I just miss that, like going for a week and, and every day was an exciting adventure. And um, now yeah, it's I can't work, pick work, out work. like a certain, yeah, not, I mean, I still love it obviously, but there's a, there's a feeling and uh, I don't know, there, there's a special feeling to the Walt Disney World vacation as opposed to driving to Walt Disney World from your home. I get it. There's a there's a different magic and a different feel for sure. Yeah, I get it. And a lot of people, um, I think that is an indelible memory for a lot of people is the journey and in particular the Magical Express. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people were like, that is when my Disney vacation used yeah. to begin was the the – Kind of out of date video on the Magical yeah. Express, and you're riding there, and there's all that excitement. And I think that's not something I ever experienced, but I hear that time and time again that that's yeah. just a, such a huge loss oh, for, for sure. people. Yeah, not just the convenience, but actually the experience itself is something that yeah. they miss. A, I a like. Experience. I remember doing that a couple times, but I remember um, we had a staff member um, who came for their first trip, and I. Um, Went with the, like we booked a room together, and he, the first trip we did the Magical Express, and it's this 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 magical moment of not only going through the arch, but going through the arch while the the cute video plays and the music, yeah. and um, yeah, that was that was a special thing for sure. And I, I just remember even arriving not on Magical Express, but on on property, how much yeah. nicer World Drive was than the surrounding area. You yeah. get on there, you're heading up there, you have that moving, articulated Tower of Terror billboard, and yeah. then you see the monorails moving, and all this stuff that's like, there's so much going on here. Yeah. And you're like, man, I can't, 
you know, I can't wait to get in the mix. The billboards, like the magic, I think, started if we were if we had a rental car going from the airport. Yeah. The billboards yeah. on the way, right? Because even the universal ones were cool back then. Like that was yeah. I remember like they those. built the anticipation. They were all like they, they everyone was really competing. Like who had the coolest billboard, right? And so like the universal ones had like King Kong was three D and he's ripping the tram in half. And there's um, some of that still, like the Millennium Falcon. I think that billboard. Still there's exists, a little bit of it. It's still like I don't think they're as grandiose as they were back then, though. Like yeah. Harry Potter sticking a wand out the billboard is not the same as like King Kong busting seven feet off the top of the billboard with the tram ripped in half. Like it just. There's a different scale to it. I think um, marketing budgets have had to go more digital too. So yeah, so th- that th- sort of there's old something school. lost there for uh, sure. Thing. Which I was, which I was wondering, just like, why are they? At, why is Disney putting billboards up across from Disney World? You know, yeah. that's why people are here. But obviously, their data says, yeah, it's worth it for us to do this. Well, the other side of it is. To not let anyone else have it, right? Yeah. Isn't it embarrassing if someone has the billboard right before your entrance? Yeah. Right? If, if that was Universal, right? I think Universal made that mistake. I, I think there's a billboard right outside of Universal that's Bush Gardens. Yep, there is. And it's been Bush, Bush Gardens has never let it lapse. And and I'm sure Universal's like, man, we really like to get that billboard. Uh, there's there's uh, There are tunnels that... Uh, Orlando International Airport, like as you would go to the rental car yeah. place, and all of them are for like St. Pete Clearwater Beach, yeah. right? And, so, and you're like, oh wow, these beaches look amazing. That's great marketing, right? Because yeah. you're in there, and you're like, oh, I'm here for a week. Why don't I go to the beach? Maybe we should go over there after I, after I don't figure out Lightning Lane and Genie. <laughs> we'll give up and we'll just go to the beach. Uh, do you think some or all of the shops still closed at WDW Parks will ever reopen? If they don't reopen in their original form, what do you think will happen to them? Okay, I can think of the Christmas shop at Hollywood Studios. They turn that into a meet and greet for Christmas, so I yeah. assume that that's going to be a yearly thing, and otherwise they don't have a real use for it. They've just decided not to operate merchandise back there, right, because Stage 1 Company Store or whatever you want to call yeah. it is still closed, too, and I don't think they really – they literally released a Kermit the Frog merchandise line and didn't reopen that store. Yes. So I don't I don't think it's coming back at this point. Um, I, I'm i curious to see if the, the stores in Animation Courtyard come back when Mermaid comes back. Um, not the Launch Bay store. I don't think that's coming back. I think Launch Bay's days are numbered based on what we're hearing. Um, but on the Mermaid side, I think in character – I would expect we'll operate, and then um, I don't know about the the tiny store in the corner. Yeah. Um, but that was just used for Jollywood. They did a photo op in there, yeah. and they cleared everything out. So maybe they'll hold that for um, for that. I would think a lot. It's mostly Hollywood Studios. That's most of the stores that are closed. Right. At uh, Animal Kingdom, I think the the entry store is dead. Um, the the little shop outside of the park entrance. Um, yeah. That's I, the sign came down, and there's been no signs of life there. That's I think that's done. Yeah. Um, how big will Disney's answer to Epic Universe be? Just a land and new rides, multiple lands, ride in multiple parks, return of Magical Express. We just talked about Magical Express. I mean, that's what I said. I I haven't heard anything, but I mean, if I was if I really wanted to hurt Universal, that would be my first thing I would do is bring that back. Yeah. That would be my first thing. But I uh, the rumblings, right? The, we got the Frontierland tease. Um, and I I am starting to believe that Tom Sawyer Island and the Riverboat are probably going. I, I think that's what's going to end up happening. Um, and so I think that's part of the response. We know they're responding in Animal Kingdom. We know they're going to do something, whether it ends up being in Kanto and, and Indiana Jones or not. Um, there's all of that. Um, and I'm sure there's going to be something more. I'm, I'm, I have big expectations for D23 this year in August. I think we're going to get some real firm details on those things that were floated our way. And then I think we're going to hear a couple things that I think are going to take people. Uh, I think people are going to be surprised. I think people are going to be surprised. And it's not, look, I don't know that it's a response to Epic Universe because I think these were things Disney was thinking about anyway. The timetable may shift because of that. But I think there's also some, I think there's some surprises in parks that aren't Animal Kingdom and aren't uh, Magic Kingdom. Okay. Yeah, I think Studios, I think, has a 
Um, from what we've heard, I think there's a there's a decent surprise for studios down the line. Again, I don't know if that's going to be announced this year, but we'll we'll, we'll see. I, I think Magical Express is the no brainer where they can yeah. win a lot of people back and get a huge response and for cheaper. something that's not that difficult to create yeah. financially, right? and much cheaper so, yeah. than any new ride attraction. Yeah. But I got easier a few to buses. do immediately. Right. Yeah. Um, from you know who of all the updates, refurbs, and PC changes to Disney attractions, which would you return to its previous state? I'd like to see Pirates of the Caribbean return to a pre Johnny Depp state. Pirates, yeah, pirates. pirates. Yeah, the redhead, the redhead scene, the men chasing the women. Um, I'm sure someone will be offended by this, but they're they're pirates. Like that's what pirates do. Um, and also, like you know, it it's. Like watch Walt Disney One Man's Dream, and when they play the the original redhead scene with him talking about how it will all continue even after Disney, yeah, and it's a very emotional moment because that scene is like that was the most recognizable scene of that attraction, yeah. So the most recognizable scene of possibly Disney's most recognizable attraction, the last thing Walt worked on for the for Disneyland before he died. And it's just, it's gone. Well, thankfully, it's still in Tokyo, but it's yeah. otherwise it's gone. I mean, look, I understand why some people are uncomfortable with it, and that it's a. It, I get it, but for history's mm-hmm. sake, I think it w- it was a thing you had to live with. But yeah, I get it. I mean, they are pirates, and let's face it; these pirates are pretty. Um, these are pretty low key pirates compared to like compared yeah. to the lyrics of their songs. They're pretty much just getting drunk and yeah. See, but that's the thing bit. is like eventually, like we are inevitably going to reach the point where two other things in that ride are offensive, right? And those two other things are gun violence and alcoholism, right? Yeah. Those are the two other things because we've seen it with country. Like part of the change at country Maybe bears torturing is, the mayor. The the yeah absolutely, but part of the thing with country bears is it, there's a couple things in there that are questionable, and I think people yeah. look at each other and the you know, mama don't whoop little Buford. I think you should shoot him instead. Yeah. Is one of those moments of if if gun violence is touchy there at country bears, it's certainly touchy at Pirates of the Caribbean, right? And we've we've seen that yeah. storm cloud building over the years, like right when they stopped selling the toy rifles, right? They they turned them orange. Yeah, they were bright orange, and even still at that point, they're like, you know, we got to just stop selling these things. Yeah, you had the shooting gallery, you have jungle skippers firing guns, and some yeah. of these other things. Um, I get, I understand why people, uh, you know, I understand why people get upset about it. I understand why the society has changed and things that in 1960 or 1965 um, that were viewed through that lens of that time were okay then and and maybe now or not. And there are probably things that we can't even foresee that will be difficult for people to deal with. Sometime in the future, right? I mean, mansion. I don't. I don't think anyone ever thought we'd have a conversation about the opening, yeah. the the stretching room, right? And right. The the you know the the suicide, the the rope hanging, yeah. right? And now they're the last time that was discussed, a bunch of people were like, you know what, that makes me uncomfortable, and I'm just thinking, that's that's haunted mansion. If you take that away, it ceases to be haunted mansion. Yeah, I. I Understand. And look, there are there are Disney, um, particularly stories of some of the princesses that have problematic, oh yeah, uh, undertones and things like that yeah. too. So uh, I get it. Society, um, you know, societies change, and sometimes yeah. it's uncomfortable for people when they change. And I get it. I know people I, say Splash, but Splash is the one where look, I love Splash Mountain, but I also think it's the most understand. Right? It it is the one that was clearly. The most offensive, and I don't care. I, I know people want to argue. You you can't argue. The three main characters had stereotypical voices, right? Like yeah. they they were absolutely f- offensive. You know, um, it, it's not even. I don't think people made it all about like the Uncle Remus stories and this and that. People made all the wrong parallels. Drew, they drew all the wrong parallels when the bottom line was. The three of them had stereotypical black character voices, right? They Voiced were, by white people. Yeah, so. like they, they had to go. Yeah. They, they had to. Look, I love those characters. I have statues and art and like I anything with the Brayers that was ever made, I bought, right? I love them. They're Mark Davis characters. I adore them. And it makes me very sad that they will never be in the parks again. 
but also as a logical human being, I sit there and I'm like, yeah, I, I like, I can't argue that one. Like pirates, I'm like, well, that, that actually happened. And also yeah. like, you don't see anyone actually buy the women, you know, like, I am I yeah. don't know. Maybe I don't know. Maybe it just feels different to me. I'm sure to someone else, it, the, the scales are tipped the other way. But yeah, um, there. But there's a whole pirate culture that is um, built around this one guy's accent when he decided to play like Long John Silver in a movie, and everybody says all yeah. pirates talk Disney like Arr, and all these type of things. And now they they sell so much pirate merchandise and pirate is like an aesthetic yeah. Gasparilla festival in Tampa uh, is a huge pirate event that has nothing. I mean, it predates Disney. Yeah. Right. But uh, all these things, people want to be a pirate and uh, you know, there is a fun loving side of piracy that is uh, in our popular culture. That is probably not in reality. In fact, in today's, Society. The biggest example we have of pirates would be like off the coast of Somalia. These do not resemble in practice or anything yeah. else the pirates of the day yeah. that they're trying to portray. Yeah. Um, again, it would probably be offensive to portray them that way too. So, but like the movies also did. Like they definitely are are womanizing and shooting guns and killing people and yeah. all that happens in that film series. You know, yeah. Not to be that guy, but. Everyone's after Elizabeth Swan for three movies. <laughs> what was the best thing of 2023? This is from uh, Florida Panthers 2020. What was the best thing 2023? Personally, it was the return of Soren over California. That's a good one. But when didn't did Soren over California gosh. return the previous year in Disney California Adventure during? Oh, that's years now. Many years. Yeah, it's every yeah. every. Yeah, that's not. But they're saying like for Disney World, at, at they're probably yeah. talking about Disney World though yeah. specifically, not all the parks around the world. Um, that's a good that's one. Great. I see. Problem for me is now I have to try to think within the calendar year what what happened in all of last year. Did Tron open in twenty twenty three? Yeah, yeah. That still wouldn't be it. For and me. Uh, Moana Journey of uh, Journey of Water Mo inspired by Moana, Moana turned out good. I still don't know. If that's yeah. my my thing. I'm hanging my hat on uh, the, for the entire year. Yeah, not that either. <laughs> that ain't happening. Uh, I'm trying to think what else happened. There's a lot of stuff. There's probably something more minor that happened where I'm like, oh, you know what it is for me? Eat. Eat? Yeah, by Manit. At Manique. Disney Springs? Ch oh, man. Oh, what's her last name? Manit Chohan? Chohan, yeah. Chohan? Yeah. How about the return of uh, Kevin Mayer and Tom Staggs to the family, kind of-ish? Yeah, but Bring still back not in. really... That's still not a thing. It's not a tangible yeah. thing. It just gives you hope, right? Oh, hope fig, while we have. figment meet and greet. Figment meet and greet. Yeah. Like the life being breathed back into figment. Yeah. That's okay. it. They, figment. They yeah. are kind of riding the figment thing hard. Good. Yeah. <laughs> so. More. <laughs> More. <laughs> uh but I have trouble reading these names. These glasses, like, from certain distances. Is there hope? This is uh, Sh Sean for Bonac uh, 5971, because there were 5,970 other Sean for Bonacs. Um, is there hope yet to return Epcot to its former glory with the right leadership? No. No, it's done. No, it's dead. It's dead. You know, maybe we wait 15 or 20 years and—, and the world comes back around, and, and it's not about IPs anymore. I mean, it, who knows where the world will be 20 or 30 years from now. But, I mean, for the next generation or so, you are living with, with the IP version of Epcot. Yeah, that, yeah, that's what you've got. Which Disney movie, without any current major attraction, would you like to see have a dedicated attraction? And they mentioned Robin Hood, The Jungle Book. Etc. Jungle Book is so obvious. Like, oh man, I'm you ride the Baloo boat. You sit on his tummy. Jungle Book and the Lion King, and I know those are both similar motifs, but those two, like, why those don't have rides? You know, Lion King got stuck with shows, which I understand. I mean, it has one of the best soundtracks, period. Mm -hmm. So that's why it's always got stuck with shows. But man. And that's why I hope, like, obviously the rumblings in Paris for ages have been there's a Lion King ride happening. Um, if that happens, man, what a what a, a stampede for them. roller coaster! You know, you... I think it's a boat ride. It's probably a boat ride. Um, yeah, I like. Um, but Jungle Book would be same as a boat yeah. ride. Be f phenomenal. Uh, Mary Poppins. Yeah, 
Mary, maybe That's Mary the Poppins. Other obvious one, right? That'd be a great one, right? Yeah. You think about it. There's 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 still a few Hercules. I would like to see a Hercules attraction. Wally. Wally, yeah. Wally that, and that, up. that could be really depressing. At the up. up. Oh yeah, why not up? House Just simulator. A, yeah. You, you're all sitting in the it's, house, and it's like a Star Tour simulator, but you're sitting around a house, and all the windows have screens. Oh, I was thinking more like Peter Pan's Flight. You just take off in a house. And in a house. It's hard to look out of the house, though. I don't know. You're sitting on the front porch. It could be like 20,000 Leagues in, in Japan. It could be the kind of that ride system. It could actually work. That would be kind of fun. Yeah, there are a lot. We could go on all day for this one. Yeah. There are a lot of those. All right. Uh, Jake posted sti- or um, Joe. Uh, Jake posted Stitch, and then Joe posted a Stitch oh, shit. image. Stitch has had an attraction. He had his chance. He is. He, blew uh, he it. has featured prominently in a couple of Disney attractions. He blew right? it. He's in the. Uh, he Tiki still has room. one. Yeah, he has he's one. also in It's a Small World yeah. in certain places. Yeah. So uh, he does get a and little. And he bit had of one of the worst attractions of all time. That's not Stitch's, Stitch's fault. Stitch's Great Escape. Yeah. They should. How have is it not his fault? I think it should be like Stitch's Hawaiian roller coaster. Like a surfing. Like, look, SeaWorld has a surfing coaster. Yeah. Why can't Disney have a surfing if coaster? If they can make it Uber themed where it, like you go through a lush environment, yeah. like Hawaiian environment. Yeah, if you're just looking at the SeaWorld parking great. lot, it's not that great. But if you're yeah. in like a, maybe an indoor coaster or it doesn't have to be a thrill coaster, right? Yeah. Just some little, little hoopty doos. Um, all right. What is your. Uh, do you think they should update Soren away from over California or around the world? I was thinking something along the line of Soren around Disney's world, where you go to all the parks around the world and sites of those countries. Yeah, but that's, that's only that's only cool for us. Yeah, like that's not cool for all guests. I mean, America is the the, the other low hanging fruit, right? To do a purely an America one, like that's cool. There's a bunch of American landmarks. I think they haven't been to that would be. Right, we we yeah. you know to do the Grand Canyon and um, trying to think what else would be fun. Some of the Rocky Mountains, New York City, obviously. New York City. Um, you know, some I don't know the Florida Keys. You know, there's all kinds. St. Louis, go know. through the arch. Oh, you go through the arch. Yeah, you know, uh, I I drove through there recently. My car is still up in Kansas, and um, they changed I seventy. It used to go. Or at least the way you the way you go, you would drive through downtown St. Louis. You drive right by the arch, but now you just kind of see it a mile or two away off to the left side. It's not as yeah. fun anymore. Uh, Don Mers says, "What is your favorite WDW snack? Just choose one." Also, if you could only hug one WDW character at a meet and greet, who is it? Figment is excluded for Tom. Love the show, guys. Never miss Eeyore. Eeyore. Love Eeyore. Yeah. yeah. Good hugs from Eeyore. What's your snack? I have mine already. That's a tough one. Um, Our snacks suck, so it's not. Are they like from any venue, or are we talking like snack cart, like a distinctive? It has to be like a walking thing, I think. It has to be something a quick grab. It can't be a table service thing. Yeah, it's hard for me because I love the pretzels, but whenever I get halfway through it, I'm like, this is not a good. This is not a satisfying pretzel. I love the idea. I love the first bite. I like that. you know, Mickey bars are really good. Um, popcorn nachos. There's all this type of yeah. stuff that it's hard for me to pick one. But there's not one. I don't yet. really do it. I I'm more of a uh, like grab a coke and yeah and go eat something. But I'm a sucker for bread. Now my favorite thing to snack on. I probably can't have anymore. Uh, Baseline Tap House has those almonds that are like kind of coated. And the last time I had them, my lips swelled up because uh-huh. apparently I'm allergic. Or I have food sensitivity to almonds. Oh. Who knew? Wow. I mean, it wasn't just my – like, my tongue swelled up. Like, I went home, and I was like, hmm, I'm going to take a bunch of, like, Benadryl or Zyrtec or something, and I'm going to sleep very carefully and hope yeah. that I don't wake up unable to breathe. There was a whole episode of news today we had to re-record. You guys missed it. No, but if, I guess I guess I would default then probably to something with ice cream. I think an ice cream sandwich or something. Mine like is that. coconut whip. Really? The coconut Dole Whip? Yeah. Uh, I like the uh, the orange cream swirl. That's my favorite okay. of those. Right. See now Disneyland. I don't do the snack thing here. Mm-hmm. If I go to Disneyland or I go to Tokyo. 
those parks have like the most amazing. So that's like what I did this week was I, I went on all of two rides, but when I had free time, I was like, I want to go eat at the park. And I got my Baymax macaron and I got, you know, the, the dill pickle popcorn yeah. uh, from Cars Land and, you know, maybe just grab an order of those film strip fries from Award yeah. Wieners or beignets. I got the I got the beignets from from the mint julep. When there's a there's a never ending list. I got oh the um they have like spicy lemon popcorn in Galaxy's Edge now. Oh, Cajun and lemon. They're fantastic. So like, Disneyland and in Tokyo, I go on and on. Disney yeah. World, I don't get grab and go stuff because I don't think any of it's good. We all agree that churros at Disneyland are better than the ones at Disney yeah. World. I still don't really get Someone them. Someone told though. us a reason. It has to do with the ones at Disneyland are kind of baking while they're there. Yeah. And the ones at Disney World are like heat are like baked off site and brought in a heat lamp. Yeah. So uh, I don't know if that's true. I don't remember. I, I don't, think that's correct. I'm I sorry if I come, didn't do your comment they justice. They come from the same ones. vendor either yeah. way. Yeah. Um, Who's your character? Do you do the Colonel Kitchen? No. I love the Colonel Kitchen at Magic Kingdom. Go in there and make your own blend of popcorn. It's really expensive. It's all messy. It's all like my Oh, I take it home. I don't eat it in the park, though. I take yeah, it but that's not what it's meant for. I it's know. not meant to be taken home. But now they don't serve it in that like cone oh, of know, wax paper anymore. They they have like, they give you like a tub. I have another snack, and I haven't had it in so long okay. that I forgot. The carrot cake cookie. Oh yeah, the carrot cake studios. Cookie. Yeah, I try to stay away from that. Like the coconut whip, you could you could certainly for a snack do, you know, way more damage <laughs> yeah. than the coconut whip. Um, yeah, so I will. I'm saving up. I will definitely have a carrot cake cookie in May for the anniversary of the park. I have to have one. Uh, do you remember the it's a Caduzzi? Yeah, yeah. I don't Not think those are around anymore. No, they're gone. Those were great. Uh, character I would hug, man. And don't say like. I can't just like pick something. Penelope says, Cruz's right? character no, from Vanilla Pirates. Or we're not <laughs> Penelope Cruz's character from, I was thinking Vanellope Von Vanellope Sweet. Cruz. Um, I think I could pick Figment. They said Tom can't pick Figment. They I'll, did, I'll pick yeah. Figment. There you Figment go. in the big hug. Yeah, um, Angelico's funny, used, her character. They had to get rid of that meet and greet because men were gross. Yeah. I used yeah. to be a big hugger. I'm not anymore. Mm. I, I, I started in COVID and then. Yeah. Um, there's Epic Universe question. Um, do you prefer Disney World 94 New Tomorrowland or Disneyland Paris Frontierland, Thunder Mesa? That's that's not fair. Those are both god tier lands. You would I probably I have a soft spot for this because it's my childhood. Yeah. 94 Tomorrowland. But man, you're talking about two of the most intricate backstory. Like as a Disney parks like nerd, it's what you want. You want that like rich backstory and everything's interconnected and um yeah, I mean, both of them are just fantastic. Um, any news on a new Figment refurb? Uh, no. If there was, I'd it'd be on a website. Yeah, not yet. <laughs> what's the most two-parter? What's the number one? What's the most bizarre influencer interaction you've had at a park? Probably that Prince Charming dev guy. Oh, yeah, because, like, Claiming we, we stole something when... So, like, I guess he filmed the... There were the, the Nazi protesters outside Disney World. Uh -huh. um, and it, it got... The source we found was there was an anti-Semitism, um, like, account, which obviously is, a, is, a, is a good cause yeah. Yeah. to not hate Jewish people. Um, and so that's who had it. And so we credited them. Certainly after we posted that, he could have contacted me. But instead, at some point, I ran into him in a park and he, um, like, tried to call me out for it. And then I was like, what are you talking about? And he said, stop acting new. And I was like, don't, don't talk to me like you're from the streets. I grew up in the Bronx, bro. Don't, don't even. Don't, don't yeah. be using slang talking to me. You could talk to me like a human being. We're adults. We cover Disney for a living. You know, let's not pretend we're tough and from the streets. Yeah, um, yeah it was weird interactions. Like, I'm, I'm not hard to find. I'm out there. There are several social media places you can contact me. Yeah. You know, not hard to find. Um, I had the incident we talked about in one of our first episodes about someone kind of Glaring at me in a in oh yeah we don't we, we won't name names uh, we won't get into yeah. that one. Um, yeah. Other than that, most of them have been pretty positive. I don't ha I haven't had a lot of like negative yeah. interactions with other people. I've um, inevitably you show up on some of their streams or something like that and them talking. It's yeah. kind of fun, but 
now. I don't have any. I mean, Pete Carney, I bump into that guy all the time. So he's got 20 people with him. It's a good time. Um, and then what's the most wholesome fan interaction you've had? I mean, probably like like young, yeah. Parents with with young kids that watch the show will come up, and the kids will will get all excited, and that's it's very sweet. Yeah, I had a family ask to take a picture one time, uh, and it was like I was like holding a baby, and there's a little kid like with their arm wrapped around my leg. You held someone's baby. I just held someone's baby. I didn't. Yeah, I did. Uh, Don't ask me to hold your baby. Not. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just. I'd it's be for the very safety nervous. of the baby. Yeah, yeah, I'd be very nervous to hold someone's baby incorrectly. So please don't. Oh, I was fine with baby. it. I was fine. I, at one point yeah. in my life, I had 27 nieces and nephews. Yeah. So. What changes do you think will be made at Grand Floridian? 1900 Park Fair, when and if it reopens? I I mean, certainly the interior will be remodeled, but I don't, I don't know. Everything seems to be in a holding pattern now, so I don't even know if they know what they're doing. Is that it? Is that the only? Is that the last? Yeah. Ariel's never counted, right? They just, the Ariel's Grotto thing oh, or whatever it's called. What are you talking about? Ariel's at Beach Club? Ariel's at Beach Club, yeah. But that that closed in the 90s. I know. I just don't know. If, I guess it's still the the holdout for uh, the restaurant that's just sitting there empty. I think it's officially gone. It, it only ended up getting used when, when they were remodeling uh, Beaches and Cream. All right. Uh, what's the most important thing people should consider if they're going to be visiting Walt Disney World or Anaheim or Tokyo or Hong Kong, et cetera? Weather? Weather. Uh, I learned a German phrase, which is, the, uh, it's very common, in Ger- everybody who's German will know this, there's no such thing as bad weather, only bad clothing. Yeah. And it's a phrase, right? Yeah. Check the weather. Last time I went to Disneyland, it, it snowed or grappled or yeah. whatever they called it. I went to, no, it wasn't, was that the, if there's a wasn't chance, the last time, it was the time I went with Jason. There's a chance of rain, bring umbrellas. If it's chance it's going to be cold, make sure you bring warm clothes. If it's going to be hot, make sure you bring light clothes. You know, like, a, yeah, I, I would say for anywhere. Yeah, and be familiar with the season in which you're you're going, for sure. Especially like, look, I mean, in some other countries you will not find clothes that fit you. So, yeah, you know, and I'm talking about not even just overweight people. I just mean, in like, body types are very different in other countries. You guys went to China and got invited to dinner yeah. at a very nice place. Well, we're overweight though, but but also you couldn't yeah. find clothing appropriate. But clothing I know like it. people who are definitely not overweight who still had. Issues like finding clothes that fit, just because okay. body types are different. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when will Tom do an interview with Jonas J and WW Pro of that park place? I don't know who those people are. I know J Jonah Jameson, but I don't yeah, know exactly. Jonas. Spider Man. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure if, if you know, I I'm not familiar, but I mean, I'll interview J Jonah Jameson. <laughs> let's let's just do. It. I'll interview. I'll interview them. I'd love to hear what they say. I have to do some research on what they do and all that kind of stuff. But sure. Seven one. Spider Man. <laughs> oh boy, uh, what would your idea to fix the Figment ride be? Please go in depth. Figment demands no less. I think it's nothing. It's it's not anything anyone hasn't said before, right? I think everyone wants. They want like a trackless remake of the original. Like that's all anyone wants, with effects brought up to today's quality, right? Yeah. That's that's it. I don't. I don't think there's. I don't think anyone's thought of anything else. Like, that's just what everyone imagines it yeah. would be. And rightfully so. It sounds good. Oh, boy. If you could go back in time, what would you do differently to get where you are now? If I get where – but everything I did got me where I am now. So what – Maybe you could do something differently and, and get better. Maybe you could – different Tom. Maybe there's an alternate universe Tom who's a billionaire. <laughs> Yeah, he's, but then the country he's bears. Dating Taylor Swift. But then the country bears don't exist. Yeah. Um, I probably would have. I'd probably go back in time and fight less with the community at large, even though they were silly fights. People took that very personally, and held that grudge for fifteen or more years. So I would. I'd probably go back in time and just be like, none of these arguments matter. Just don't have them. And yeah. If you had to choose one job at Walt at the Walt Disney Company, which one would you choose if you couldn't be CEO? Streetmosphere. <laughs> but I guess that's not a job that still exists. Yeah. Um, um, I don't know. You could be like, 
you could be a, an Imagineer. We already talked about that. You don't, you don't want to be an Imagineer. It's a lot of politics. I'm not good at politics. What about you? Uh, You're not answering these. Um, I don't know. I think I'd want to be like in Pixar or something. Hmm. Doing help, what? Help develop stories of Pixar. Okay. Be good. All right. Be a good one. I want. You know what I want to do? I can't cook. I just want to be in charge of food and beverage. Like I can't cook, but like with they have talented people. They're certainly talented chefs yeah. that work there. I think if you had someone that just like sat there and actually tried stuff, and the decisions weren't made purely on profit margin. Like, I think the menus at Walt Disney World could be better. I want to be the, in charge of food and beverage for yeah. the Walt Disney World Resort. There you go. That's what I want to do. Uh, Wolf Studio says, I'm from Kansas and uh, from going to JCCC Animation. And after being in the DCP, how would you think Disney would benefit if they operate a studio in Kansas City or Lenexa area, operating a museum or a smaller park hotel for people in the Midwest? Kansas City's trying to pass film subsidies for Kansas, Missouri. Um, by the way, Kansas City Art Institute, that's where Walt Disney learned to draw. Yeah. Uh, I we drove past there with Jason. I think you were busy that day when we were in Kansas City. But um, there is a lot of Walt Disney. I was just in Lenexa last week at the uh, Lenexa City Center. They have a mm. a lot. Of, they're building a lot of stuff there. But nobody outside of uh, this sh- uh, of people in that area are familiar with that. But yeah, I've, I'm all about some stuff in the Midwest, even if it's small. They tried a Disney Quest in Chicago. That didn't work out too well. Yeah. I think they should do something in Kansas City for Walt Disney. Such a big part of his uh, – obviously, his young life was um, – yeah. very young life until he was nine years old was Marceline, but then Kansas City until he really started the company. So It uh, seems like Disney's doing more and more in Marceline, though. Yeah. Um, there's, there's a little more involvement, it seems, every year, right? Also, like, the Walt Disney Family Museum exists, and it's it's – I don't know that anyone's going to do a better job of covering yeah. the story of the company from his birth until his death than that museum does. Yeah, I mean, I would like to see them do something with the original Laugh-A-Gram building, which you saw. Yeah, I don't disagree, but as far as it yeah. being like a big attraction, yeah, something I'm, like a like a Disney attraction, kind, I don't, I don't see that. Look, they they already got Taylor Swift now. That maybe, you know. but yeah, no, certainly the Walt Disney Company could kick a couple million dollars to whatever nonprofit is. Doing stuff there, yeah. On average, how many times a year do you think you go to some Disney park? Over a hundred. Oh yeah, I mean, I I think it used to be three hundred. I think I used to be somewhere around three hundred. Now probably like, I mean, now I'm probably somewhere around one fifty, two hundred. What's the worst opening day of a park or attraction you've ever experienced? I've only done attraction opening days. I've never done park I have, opening days. I, have, I haven't done a park, at least one I was conscious for. Um, the only rides I've done really in the first bad. day, Tron was a bit of a mess. I wasn't um, here for that. I did Runaway Railway on the first day. That went fine. Uh, that was fine. The um, ride wasn't good, but it worked. Um yeah. I mean, Rise broke the first ride. Yeah, but, Rise. But, like, it still was, like, a wow moment. So, you know. I, I don't know. I've, there are restaurant openings that were catacombs. Restaurant openings are, are I mean, The bad. Wish. I mean, like, you want to talk the about wish, openings, the, yeah. the Wish cruise ship would be. And that was kind of a disaster weeks later. Yeah. Right? It took a very long time for them to get The yeah. Wish operationally to a place where I think it's like steady. You don't hear a lot of complaints anymore about no, they finished it. There yeah. are people that have still have problems with the design and they don't all like that kind they of stuff, don't but. mesh with the, the the choices, right? But but it functions now at least. But I don't park. I like Parkland. I mean, Toy Story Land had its issues, right? Like I know they had to close one side of Saucers. Obviously, Slinky Dog. Like the the tails came off for a while. They built the the urinals were all built at child height by accident. Yeah. They cut the restaurants. Like Woody's lunchbox was a nightmare. Toy Story Land probably the roughest. No shade. Like it, it opened in the summer. It rained every day. No one had anywhere to go. People yeah. huddled under temporary um, three temporary under umbrellas in the middle of the land. Mm-hmm. Um, you know they got three of those baby bell tables, and the rest were like colored IKEA patio furniture. Right. You know. 
Um, I think Alex, we have time for like one. Alex 64 Gaming, more. will Black Ariel stay present in the parks or will Disney just continue to shine light on White Ariel? As far as I know, the um, African American Ariel was is not in the park. It was just there for to promote like a, a period of time during the film. Is that correct? Isn't it still a one man stream? Is it still there? I'm I not believe sure. She, I don't know. She's removed from Disneyland. She's no yeah. longer at Disneyland. I don't have a problem. In fact, for me, the best part of that movie was Ariel. She was great. Uh, they did scuttle dur- dirty, as my yeah, friends like to say, or fla- yeah. they did fra- flounder dirty, as my friends Sebastian, like to say. Yeah. Um, but she was wonderful. I I didn't have a problem with her, and I I think it's great to have also like good for, for uh, what, uh, what's it, Melissa McCarthy for just yeah. not being bad, right? Like people were so mean. They're like, she's gonna be awful. I was with people. I was like, yeah, it's probably she's gonna be over the top and bad. And then I saw it. I was like, oh, she did good. It's like she she played the character well. Yeah. And the girl that played Vanessa, even though she's not in a lot, was was great too. Um, well, we're going to have to probably save some of these for a future episode, Tom, yeah. because we're uh, up against the clock a little bit. Yeah, um, you're looking good in your park candy shirt. Uh, it's got like a Miami Vice vibe to it, but it's Epcot. it's Epcot. But yeah, it does have Miami Vice. But Epcot, you know, Epcot Center Inspired all about them, Epcot, them yeah. palm trees, right? Palm trees with the little. This bit one has of, the uh, hidden. What do they call this hidden thing on these? I the don't placard. Know. Yeah. Whatever it is, it says the future belongs to you starting October 1st, 1982. So our friends at Park Candy provided our shirts uh, for today's episode. Uh, Thank you very much. You can get these shirts and many more uh, at uh, www.nt.link slash parkcandy. If you use the code WDWNT at checkout, you'll get a 15% discount. Um, Sometimes we wear shirts that either have not been released yet or that they're not going to have in stock when you go in certain sizes. stocked yet, yeah. Uh, But go and check it out. There's new stuff coming out all the time. Yeah. And uh, these are... You know, very comfortable. I went, uh, despite the fact that we get, uh, we're given some shirts to wear, I went and purchased some this week because I like them so much. Yeah. They're so comfortable. I like your Jungle Cruise one Yeah, I like this one. I didn't I like purchase this one. one. This one was yeah. uh, given to us by them. But, yeah, it's wonderful. They have a lot of great stuff. And uh, we appreciate you supporting people who support us. Yeah. And by using that link, you support us. So Correct. Well, that is all the time we have for this episode. We'll be back uh, next week with something new. I think hopefully it'll be Epic Universe, but we'll depending on Annie's yeah. availability. She is available, but we'll have to set a uh, schedule. And uh, we thank you for watching. We'll see you next time right here on the WW News Today podcast. We'll see you real soon.